my environmental concerns were strictly zero because I come from a background of, I was an actor. I was an actor in Montreal. I'm the son of an actor and I was uh, hosting Travel Travel and I was starring on a TV show called Sirens. So my only concern was like, what's, what's my line and what's for lunch? So about six years ago, I, I, I'd moved here. I had a huge lawn and I said to myself, God, there's got to be something other than just mowing lawn every weekend. There's surely something I can do. Started looking on the internet and came across this stuff called permaculture. This is Claude Genet. He lives in Montreal, but I follow him to his country house in Vermont. It's here that he experiments with different types of self-sustaining ecosystems. It's here that he also gives workshops to a growing number of people who are more concerned about what they eat and where it comes from. And this is where he explains to me this growing phenomenon called permaculture. Permaculture is derivative of the words permanent and agriculture, or ultimately for a permanent culture. It's a system of design. Claude explains to me how we can design our own habitats to act more like nature and how easy it is to maintain. There's this <clears throat> mistaken thing that we do where we'll plant a fruit tree right into a lawn. And lawn is the enemy of a young fruit tree. What you gotta do is have all kinds of other plants that will benefit and assist the young fruit tree in growing. All of a sudden the working of the system looks a lot like what you might do in the tropics with like a machete. And you'll come along and get this, for example, comfrey, which is a tremendously fertile and fast growing plant, and you'll chop and drop just like that. And it's just that simple. So in other words, instead of going out and making big compost and stuff, this is like the simple cheater's way to do it. And this plant will grow back three or four times a year. Right? So the, here, here, here is my apple tree's fertility growing right nearby. And I'll mulch it out and just feed, the, feed it in this manner. And basically, this takes me all of, well, as you're seeing, about 30 seconds. And, uh, you know, my work is done. There you have it. Okay, we're feeding that plant. Once you get the trees planted and the things going, it really doesn't require that much input. So that appeal to, mm -hmm. to that side of me. It's, it's off and running and doing its thing. I come in, have a look. Yeah, it's good. Okay, next. You know, mm -hmm. that's the extent of my work here. Claude prefers to be surrounded by dense patches of naturally growing vegetation. Trees in a variety of foliage edible. grow right outside his front door, hey, and all of it is edible, you even the flowers. So Yummy. That's some crazy stuff, man. Yeah. That is good. So we drive back to Montreal, and Claude shows me how to start my own backyard ecology in the city. We buy $25 worth of herbs and soil, and everything else we need comes from my trash or recycling box. What we're going to do is turn this bad news into good news. We're simply mulching it out. We're simply going to be dis. There's this notion that the environment is something outside of ourselves. But if you think about it, when we talk about the environment, we're literally talking about our life support systems. So with permaculture, we've come to the basic observation that no culture can survive without a sustainable source of food and a land use ethic. And we have neither a sustainable source of food nor a sustainable land use ethic. We can begin to cultivate ecologies in our own backyards and begin to restore and repair the damage. And you can come in and take leaves you know, here and there for like every meal and it'll keep going, right? right, right, right. That's what's so nice about it. Oh, this great. makes wonderful tea, stomach delicious. calming. So every time you want to clean up your yard with yard waste, uh, well, you now have plant food. You can be mulching around, around like, that. like that, and now you're literally feeding your plants at the same time as you're taking care of your garden. You know, we can move from something must be done to something we can do. So it's empowering, and everyone's looking, what can I do, what can I do, how can I contribute? What more can I do besides just recycling? This is like next generation recycling, really.